Of all the arts, none is more fundamental to our lives than architecture. It tells not only of our own times, but of the past as well. Architecture captures the spirit of its age, from the timelessness of the Great Pyramids to the steel and glass sweeping towers of the modern city. Architecture from humble to grand tells a story. This is the story of the world's greatest skyscraper in New York City at the corner of 34th Street and 5th Avenue, the Empire State Building. At the end of the 19th century and beginning of the 20th, enormous wealth was being accumulated in the United States, and specifically in New York City. The very rich had society balls, clubs, and Fifth Avenue mansions. But these were giving way to the new game in town, making one's mark by building beautiful skyscrapers. For thousands of years, humans have been constructing impressive monuments. The Great Pyramids in Egypt are recognized worldwide as one of the most impressive structures ever built. The Parthenon in classical Greece, built in the 5th century BC, is considered the crowning gem of Greek art. The Roman Empire's Colosseum is widely known as one of the greatest works of architecture and engineering. Yet, it was not until the invention of industrial steel that man was truly able to reach for the sky. For decades, the tallest building in the United States was Trinity Church on Lower Broadway. In 1890, Joseph Pulitzer of the Pulitzer Prize fame erected a building for his newspaper. The New York World Building rose to a height of 309 feet, making it the tallest office building in the world. From his office at the top of the cupola, Pulitzer took pleasure in looking down on dozens of his competitors. Little did the world realize that in four decades, the Empire State Building would rise to a height four times taller than the New York World Building. His reign only lasted two years until the insurance giant Manhattan Life constructed its building in Lower Manhattan at a height of 348 feet. The race continued through 1899 when a group of speculators financed the Park Row Building it was 391 feet high and still stands today. These buildings were gaining enormous notoriety throughout the world. During this era, in 1902, Daniel Burnham erected the Flatiron Building at the intersection of Fifth Avenue, 23rd Street, and Broadway. It had a unique style resembling the bow of a ship and quickly became one of the most famous and photographed office buildings in the world. it still remains as one of architecture's greatest achievements. The innovator and inventor, Isaac Singer, created the home sewing machine. Demand for it exploded throughout the world, making the company extremely wealthy. Spotting an opportunity to promote the Singer sewing machine even further, Singer attached a tower to his existing building, bringing the edifice to a height of 612 feet, surpassing the then tallest structure in the United States, 
the 555-foot Washington Monument. The Singer Company was a master promoter, distributing tens of thousands of this picture to accentuate the importance of its building as it compared the Singer to many of the world's greatest structures, featuring St. Paul's Cathedral in London, San Marco in Venice, the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt, and the Vatican in Rome. And there was the Singer Building, represented as the tallest building in the world. Singer, however, conveniently forgot about the iconic Eiffel Tower, which was constructed in Paris for the World's Fair in 1889. The Eiffel Tower was 984 feet, a full 372 feet taller than the Singer Building. The Bell Tower in Venice was the model for metropolitan life, whose beautiful new headquarters building on New York's Madison Square soared to a height of 700 feet. It was the tallest office building in the world from its opening in 1909 until 1913. The five and dime baron Frank Woolworth had amassed a fortune with 600 stores throughout the United States, England, and Canada, and he wanted a structure to reflect his success. At the time, the most admired building in the world was the Customs House in New York, designed by the talented Cass Gilbert. Woolworth spared no expense and demanded that his new building tower over metropolitan life. Metropolitan Life had once refused Woolworth a loan, and this refusal was answered by the Woolworth 792-foot structure. On April 24, 1913, President Woodrow Wilson flicked a switch in Washington and ignited 80,000 light bulbs inside the new building. The Reverend Parks Cadman the leading evangelist of his time, gave the Woolworth the moniker for which it is still known today, the Cathedral of Commerce. Frank Woolworth claimed his building was the tallest office building in the world, conveniently forgetting the one office belonging to Monsieur Gustave Eiffel, which sits atop the Eiffel Tower. Today, the Woolworth still has offices, but has also been converted into apartments as well. 17 years later, in 1930, a fresh battle was brewing. H. Craig Severance, a star architect, teamed up with World War I hero and investment banker George Orstrom, along with the construction genius brothers William and Paul Starrett. unbelievable 10-month period, working round the clock seven days a week, they built the newest, tallest skyscraper in the world, 40 Wall Street. 40 Wall Street soared to a height of 927 feet, a full 125 feet higher than the Woolworth Building. 